This is 46B. Note number eight to write down is that uh, Queen Elizabeth I rules following her half-brother Edward and her half-sister Mary. And Edward was in favor of the Protestants, Mary in favor of the Catholics, and then Queen Elizabeth tries to strike a balance between the two. She rules for a very long time and by a lot of measures rules exceedingly well. She really tries to keep peace in her country between the different Christian groups and try to soothe and mend some of the civil strife that had been happening while also defending England against the Spanish and the advance of the Spanish Armada. Note number nine, Puritans, because that brings us to eventually to America in the north, uh, were members of the Church of England and what they wanted to do, their form of reformation was to purif purify Anglicanism of all Catholic influences. And there were some other things too, just to have kind of a, a devout, holy, pious, modest life. Note number 10, the Elizabethan settlement. And we Elizabeth was such a powerful queen that we call the time during which she ruled, 1550s to 1600, we call it the Elizabethan age. And there's actually fashion and furniture and theater that goes with that, that people around the world know about. The Elizabethan settlement allowed priests to marry in England and to conduct sermons in English instead of Latin. But the Anglican tradition has a lot of Catholic influence, uh, communion, baptism, the prayers, the liturgies, the blessings, the common book of prayer is, is similar to a lot of Catholic liturgy. So that's kind of how she bridged that divide. Um, Roman numeral six, the Reformation expands. And we have a chart here kind of showing when different things began. So right at the very beginning, you have Lutherans with uh, 1517 and Martin Luther, and then you have Anglicanism and Calvinism and Anabaptists around that beginning time, and then all these other branches that go off. Kind of interesting. You'll learn more about this next year in World Religions when you uh, study denominations with Mrs. Winkler. Number one, Calvinism influenced France, the Huguenots there, and they were persecuted sometimes. Number two, in the 1550s, John Knox brought Calvinism to Scotland, and the Presbyterian Church, which follows some of Calvin's the uh, theology, became Scotland's official church, so different than England. Ireland has had some troubles, as you probably know. Uh, England tried violently at times to impose Anglicanism on the Irish, but only succeeded in the north, and the Catholic people and the Protestant people uh, have tended to fight in Ireland. There are some who can see that Christ unites us, but there has been a lot of uh, fighting and civil unrest in Ireland. Um, in Scandinavia, key monarchs embraced the Reformation. And rem remember, when you read and write Reformation, think people reading the Bible for themselves, having an individual relationship with Jesus. Number five, in Eastern Europe, ethnic conflict greatly impacted the Reformation. And so there were different groups, and you can kind of see uh, even Islamic groups, different groups kind of interacting in Eastern Europe and uh, some breaking away from Catholicism, some wanting to reform Catholicism from within. Note number six, many Czechs embrace the Reformation. So you have many people in Czechoslovakia wanting to worship God because they want to, wanting to have a relationship with Jesus, wanting to read the Bible in their own language. This is Stanislaus Hosius, and uh, he's Polish, and he was a hero in Poland and encouraged people to, to keep the faith, which to him meant staying true to Catholicism while also reading the Bible. And we know that several popes recently have come from Poland. So Poland is a strong place of, um, we could call it evangelistic Catholicism. Number eight, the Balkans, which are gonna be a powder keg for World War I, um, end up being down here, a blend of Lutherans, Catholics, and Muslims. And uh, there's gonna be some conflict there with those groups. Roman numeral seven, the 